is there not a magma chamber oh. underneath Yellowstone oh. National Park? Yes, Ken. Yes. And is this magma chamber of sufficient size that if there was an eruption there, it could potentially be rated yes. as a super eruption? Exactly. Well, I'm not could. saying that there will. I'm saying no. that there's a chance. No, what you said on television was overdue. You know, that, that's what you said. Overdue, you said. Caught up in the moment, I expect. Well, well, you and a few million other people, I guess. Hey, let's not do that. No, sis, I have a legitimate scientific viewpoint. Oh, he oh, thinks he's... Oh, have you ever actually been to Yellowstone? It's not necessary. No. Your <laughs> excellent website provides all the data I just interpret. Oh, you, no, you misinterpret. That, that's what you do. Can we not do this now, uh, please? Uh, look, all I'm saying is you do not go on television and create a mass panic over one potential scenario just in order to sell a book. Oh, come on. You don't go on television and tell everybody that everything's going to be just fine when you know damn well it might not be. Kenneth! No, but just... No! Both of you, I said not now. I'm sick of this. Do you have nothing else? You haven't seen your nephew in over a year. Sorry. Hello, Will. How's school? <laughs> Seamless. When I first met Rick, he was a geology student, part of a team studying Yellowstone Lake. They, uh, they discovered this enormous 2,000-foot-long bulge beneath the lake. And I got very excited about it. And the press got hold of the story and convinced a lot of people that Yellowstone was going to blow. It created this huge panic. And then, nothing happened. Made Rick very cautious about what he said in public. And when he got the job as scientist in charge, he... Well, people didn't pay even more attention to what he said. So, it's a boy, right? Mmm, little boy dragon. Huh. And with a new feature. Show me. Some sort of anomaly above the magma chamber, just below Firehole Creek Basin. Yeah. Could be water or gas. An intrusion of magma through a fault line opened up by the quake, right? Yeah, impossible to tell until we get a clear image. Oh, thanks. We're still processing all the data from the K.O. Sun quake. Oh, God, that was days ago. Yeah, I know. Listen, Matt's found a section of dead pine to the northeast of Sour Creek. You got a visitor. Hang on. Northeast of Sour Creek Dome, along a ring fracture of the caldera rim. CO2 or heat? CO2, suffocating the roots. The magma's only two to three kilometers deep at that point. Yeah, or less if it's rising. All right, so who is it? Wendy something from FEMA. Wendy Rice? The undersecretary in charge of the Federal Emergency Management Agency is here. You told her to wait in my office. You're fired, Dave. You can't fire yeah, me. Yeah, you're lucky that's true. I'm sorry. Ms. Rice. <laughs> hey. You've caught me off guard. Sorry. Right. I'm Richard Lieberman. Yes, Rick, I recognize you from the television. Oh. Just call me Wendy. Thanks. Well, sorry about the mess, Wendy. No problem. It's been a busy couple of days. Please sit down. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to cut to the chase, Rick. I want to know if we should be worried about this. Uh, oh, yeah. um, oh. uh, based on the data that, w that we're, we're getting, uh, yes, there are indicators that there could be an eruption. Or it could be business as usual at Yellowstone. Now, if there is an eruption, then there is a good possibility that uh, it's going to be a moderate one. This isn't enough, Rick. If there's even the slightest chance of this happening, I want to know what that means. I want to know what we can do about it. How much do you know about uh, super eruptions? But super in front of an eruption, I don't imagine it means better. Can I show you something? Please. Okay. See, the magma chamber that sits underneath Yellowstone? Well, here. We think it's roughly the same dimensions as the the caldera rim itself. We think it's around 40 kilometers wide by 80 kilometers long and around 8 kilometers deep. You think? <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to get a clear picture of. In fact, the only way to even attempt to see a magma chamber is, uh, ironically enough, by relying on earthquakes. 
Have, have a seat, please. Thank you. It's called uh, seismic tomography. What we do is we plant an array of seismographs throughout the park, yeah. and then when an earthquake occurs, the seismic shock waves from these events travel through the earth. Now, these waves move slightly slower through the molten rock than through the solid rock. So we can use these slight differences in arrival time here at the seismometers to begin to calculate and plot the rough dimensions of the chamber. It's kind of like sonar. And that tells you how much magma is down there? Well, what, what we're trying to determine essentially is the nature of this magma. Is it, is it eruptible magma? Is it uh, too viscous? Is it too sticky to go anywhere? Or is it molten enough? Is it liquid enough that it, that it can escape? You know, we also want to know how it's situated in the chamber. Is it uh, kind of spread out in individual pods or uh, pockets throughout the chamber? Or, and this is, this is what we don't want, is it accumulated in one place, sufficient enough that it could trigger a, uh, a super eruption? Okay, let's talk worst case scenario. Okay, well, uh, we have run some projections based on the first super eruption at Yellowstone uh, 2.1 million years ago, mm -hmm. essentially because this is the one we have the most uh, data available on. Mm -hmm. Now, if the next one were to behave in a similar way, then we would be looking at between two and 3,000 cubic kilometers of rock, gas, and ash erupting across the United States in a pattern that looks like this. Zone 1 represents a 100 kilometer radius around Yellowstone. Basically everything in this area would be completely wiped out by uh, pyroclastic flows. That's the rock and ash that spills from the side of an eruptive column. Um, that is a pyroclastic flow. These surges can travel up to 700 kilometers an hour. So, uh, yeah, these, these journalists were very, very lucky. <laughs> Yeah, this woman was uh, caught at the edge of a pyroclastic flow. You see, these surges can reach up to 800 degrees Celsius. Anyway, yeah, that's, that, that's what happens to anyone that's within the first 100 kilometer uh, radius of the volcano. Mm -hmm. Now, out here in zones 2 and 3, virtually everyone and everything in these two areas will be trapped by extremely heavy ash fall. That's roughly 3 million people. Yeah, yeah, and uh, here out in zone four, we're talking about ash fall of around 15 centimeters. Now, 15 centimeters, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you add rain to 15 centimeters of volcanic ash, and that uh, is certainly enough to collapse a roof. Um, and then, you know, in zone five, it gets down to around five centimeters of ash fall. Uh, this is a huge area covering yeah. most of the grasslands any animals that happen to be grazing there. And uh, that's also the grain belt, of course, so that's all the, the food gone. Uh, and then uh, zone six, we tail down to around a centimeter of ash uh, extending out to the eastern seaboard. A centimeter. I read it takes just one millimeter to close an airport. Yeah. It's, see, the thing that people don't understand about volcanic ash is it's not like ash from your backyard barbecue. It's rock. It's abrasive, it's pervasive, it's destructive, it uh, shorts out electrical equipment, it clogs machinery, you name it. And it's also extremely tiny. It's uh, 100 microns across. It's so tiny you can inhale it. And when you do, it uh, combines with the moisture in your lungs and forms a cement-like mixture. You essentially drown in what's basically liquid concrete. So. Anyway, uh, that is the the worst case scenario. So you tell me, I mean, if an event like this were to happen, what is FEMA going to do? Is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Yeah, <laughs> it is going to happen. Is it going to happen in our lifetime? Um, I don't know. And that is the most honest answer that anybody can give you, Wendy. I don't know.